Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's October 20th. This is our chart lesson for the day, and another range day, really. Um, generally, as we talked about yesterday, when prices spend most of the day between your overnight, here's your overnight high, here's your overnight low. Uh, we did push below that. Really, that's two two legs down, and then we just went sideways. Uh, I was looking at it pretty much as a range type day and using these shorter term trend lines. Uh, you might have tried to, you know, when we made these, let me, let me actually slide this over. When we came in and prices were working down, once we started going higher here, you might have taken your trend line and drawn it right across like that. Actually, let me use a different line to make this easier. Draw it right across those lows. I want to do it a little steeper than that, probably, to get the closes. You can see that's right across those closes. So you might have drawn it like that and then copied that and drug it up to see if you're going to find a reversal off that trend line. And you can see prices working higher. So you can see by about 8.30 or 8.40 or so, you could have had that. It looks more sideways to me, but just in case, you want to have that up there. And you can see prices working up to it, and lo and behold, where they turn down? Right at that area right there, and then they go straight back down. In the end, um, I believe this was a two-legged move down in a trading range day, and of course, if you measure that first leg, and then you look, we get a perfect measured move, basically. We actually pushed a little bit lower and trapped people. But that's really your target line. And you see that's exactly where we got to and then we reversed. And you can see that this affected prices some when it came back up here. I would have noticed that one a little higher, so I would have adjusted it right there. Still fits. And now it fits perfectly. Um, but early on, I would have had it off those closes. But you still figure, you know, you don't, you may not know exactly where it's going to turn, but you get an idea. And you could have known that by a little after 8:30, right after the open. And people will tell you this stuff doesn't work, but it does. Um, I didn't end up using this channel uh, because I felt like we were more of a. It still has more of a range feel. Notice how prices are below the EMA, above, below, above, below, above below above below above that's and we're still trading within the overnight highs and lows so that's a general feel that you're probably and we already had the two measured legs down uh, as well so um, also you would have been looking for once we went lower right here generally you're, you may get a measured leg there and so I would have measured it that way too it turns out that the two legs down is the better way so this line doesn't really help you it actually might have hurt you up here on a short, but if you look how we're going sideways, there's no reason to go short there. Uh, in fact, when it dropped lower, um, I liked it for a short, hoping that you know we were headed back up here. And um, so, just something else to look at. Um, in the end, it looks like it fits right there even better. But we overshot it down here, so that could lead to a complete reversal without making a new low. Uh, and really, it didn't really have to revert. It, it did reverse off the lows, but in the end, it's just a range day, so we went sideways. So I'm going to take that back off because, to me, I don't think you need it. I think you're better off playing the shorter-term trends and the range. And so that's the way I looked at it. That's the way I'm going to show it. Uh, but anyway, let's back out a little more, talk about the trades, and wrap it up for the day. These are the trades I saw uh, early on. This is right after the 7 o'clock hour. We're correcting here. We get a break. We try to go higher. And then we turn down right off that line. And your target should be here at this point. Or a measured leg like this one right here. That's the two targets you're going to have. And you want to make sure you got enough room to get out before you get to here. Maybe even here. So, but you see those two targets. So that gives you a target of here, of here and here. And we went further than that. So 
Uh, but that's the first two things I would look at. And then once we'd started to make the final leg down, a lot of times you'll make a short leg here, and then you'll make a bigger leg, and then you'll have one more little push. And lo and behold, it's a perfect measured move to that piece right here. And you'll see that from time to time. So always watch for that, just like right here. Once we started to go lower again, just in case we get one more, because that looks like really all one leg. I mean, there's some legs within that, but for the most part, that's all one leg. Measure that, bring it down, and look, lo and behold, a perfect measured move again. So, um, the people, I, you know, I, I'll get these emails. Well, how did you know it was going to bounce here? Uh, something, it made me think about something that I explained to him. And maybe I haven't explained it like this before. But the idea is you're not constantly on the right side of the chart looking for trades, right, where the price action's happening. All right, I drew my trend line here. I know we're dropping down. So what I want to do is, where's my key entry point? Unless I get a trap or some, something crazy, this is my key entry point right here. So I'm going to sit here and wait on price action to bounce and come back to that key entry point. Look, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. And then it finally gets back. So now that it's back to that key entry point, I'm going to look for a setup right here if I get one. And you get the first move lower, you get a break of that trend line. You try to come back, you test that trend line again, and then you get a big bearish bar right there. Go short right there. So that's what I'm doing. I'm thinking ahead. I know what prices are doing, so I know where they're probably headed. And this could actually be right over here, and this could be an overshoot here. It doesn't matter in the end, but you know, if you want to, it could be either way. So, uh, but that's what I'm doing. So I hope that helps some people because people don't seem to get that. They they, they want to know well, how'd you you know why didn't you take the second entry there and instead take the trap? Well, because I wasn't looking for the second entry. I was I was expecting something else to happen because I understand what the chart's doing. Like right here, I'm not looking for a second entry long. I'm not interested in longs at all because the trend is down. I'm looking for a short. And so if anything, I want to find the failed second entry long. And so, anyway, let me back up here, start over. Uh, but we had that first entry there, and I showed you how we were looking for the two targets. And uh, this thing just keeps going. And I would stay with it until you probably get a close outside the trend line and then a break above that. So I'd probably stay with it to right here. I might exit here off this double bottom when you start going sideways as well, because that's not a good sign. And it could be that this is your trend line right here, and you got an overshoot. So if you get an overshoot, a lot of times you just get a reversal. I played it as it was here, and we still got the break in the new low, so that's how I played it. But uh, but anyway, then we dropped, and we're just, as we were talking about, we're, we're working up. We get a break. We try to go higher, and then we turn down again. We actually went down, up down up so there's two legs in there even if you can't see them and we're kind of going sideways too but there's no doji in there and then you get this big bearish bar right off the trend line uh, that's a great setup that's what you're waiting on uh, it's a quick move and then of course we make this double bottom you get a break comes back you probably want to draw your little trend line up through there I really think it fits better right there. And um, if you move that over the top, it'll, you can see that it fits real nicely on the top. That's holding prices nice. We get a close outside. We never even get a retest, test, it just go, retest attempt. It just goes lower. So I didn't see, and there's not a good signal bar here. So I think you got to skip that one. And then, of course, you get that push below the double bottom. But look how we've been going sideways. What? What is probably going to happen? I know everything teaches you to get short right here, but what's probably going to happen? It's probably going to fail and reverse. It should come back to test this breakout area, probably the EMA, and it may get back in the range and go all the way back to the top, which is early on at that point I was looking for the top up here. 
because that's your overnight high, just like this was your overnight low. That's the reason I was looking for it to find support here. And so you get this fail break lower. You Technically, you could go long right there. I'll make it green. But I think you're always better off to wait on a lower high, or in this case, a higher low. Uh, it'd be a lower high if you were coming off the top. But in this case, it's a... Um, second entry or a second chance off the low and you get that right here so but you're so far away from the ema this is probably going to be a failed break lower you could go long right there it's a little more aggressive this one's the one you probably wait on go long there and you can see that's a simple easy move back and guess what when you catch these failed breaks a lot of times you catch the low or the high of the day in this case we catch the low of the day it doesn't turn out to go all the way back to the high but still, that's a great move between around 21.32 to almost 21.42. So that's almost a 10-point move, and you can ride that the whole way. So, and again, if you, you know, I showed you where you might draw your line there and drag it over, uh, and that might have, that would have given you an idea where we were going. You probably should assume that we're going to test each of these resistance areas, so you don't really didn't need the trend line. Figure it's going to test this one first. Being that way away from the EMA, it's probably going to pull back, even if it doesn't, uh, even if it is going to go higher. Um, it does get a bounce off the trend line, but notice we aren't to the upper side yet. Normally when you come off one side, you're going to the other. The fact that you can't get there makes it very risky entering on that first entry right there. So wait on the second entry and see what you get. You get a second entry right here. I don't know how easy that is to see right there. and But look at that signal bar. Horrible. So just wait. And then it pushes down and it comes back up. And now you're going sideways. And you got a trend line right there. And you really got it confirmed right here. So you technically you could go short right there. Uh, but you still don't know if you might get a bounce here and a retest attempt. Uh, if it's a range day, you don't always get one. But you don't know that yet. So just sit tight, but I wouldn't take that long there with it going sideways and still inside that trend line. I want to close outside and you low first. And this is your close outside. And at first I'm thinking, all right, we're going for a new low here. We may turn and go higher, but we don't. We just go down. But either way, I still want to take the trap, but that's why I didn't go long there. I'm waiting on this short term one to play out. And you can see I got my little short term trend line coming down there and I also drew the longer term one as well, just in case it's right too. And so at the minimum, I want a break of this real short term. When, or when I say a break, I mean a close outside, convincing close, and then a new low. And you get a close outside here, but the new low came first, and then you got the close outside. So you're probably going to try to go lower one more time. And if you don't, you got to miss this trade. But guess, because, and I guess. I'm guessing that a lot of people got trapped right there because look how that thing took off. So when it went up and turned down, I went, I had my, I dropped a short in there in case it went out the other side, and sure enough, and then the bottom drops out of it. And you catch a runner right here, and you can ride this all the way to the lows. So that's how I would be thinking, and that's how I would try to play that one. And look at it go. It pulls back right here. Um, and this one's tempting, but it's not really... Uh, you would have drawn your trend line off these two swings, so you really wouldn't have had a trend line yet uh, off on this shorter term one. And we're not back to the main one, so I'm not really looking for a trade right there. Although you could assume that we're probably going to push down and test these, this go to the low side, and, we, and this may turn out to be the low down here. And notice we did bounce there, so you got room to consider that one, but it's just not a very good setup. It should have been up here. Uh, you could probably argue for that one to be green, but you know, then then you start making mistakes and stuff like that. So this is really your signal bar, but I uh, right here, and you can see it's just not a great signal bar either. But your stop would have to go above that, and then of course it looks like it may bounce here, but it pushes on through. So if you catch this up here and you got a runner, you get to ride it all the way down. So. Now you've got a, another break below support here, another double bottom. So it's probably going to be a failed break lower. Um, again, you might have considered, look how far away that is from the EMA. You might have considered entering there. 
Uh, I didn't mark it because I like to wait on a little higher low. But again, uh, smart traders know what's going to happen here. You're going to probably pull back at least to the EMA and probably to try to come back to here and test this. But instead, uh, you get a second entry long right here. Uh, when I say second entry, it's just a second attempt. I probably should have called that something different because it's not like your standard second. However, I always called it that, knowing what I meant, and that kind of stuck. And so, but that confuses people. So it's just a high or low. That's basically what this is. But notice how you got three bars stacked up. Uh, it's inside this big bearish one. So I don't like going long there. It would have worked, but you don't. It's not a good setup. So just skip it. And it starts working sideways. And look what happens. Now you got resistance here. You got multiple highs. You get a, so and you get a failed break higher. You're back to the key entry point, which is the main trend line. You get a second entry short right there off the EMA, off the trend line, failed break higher, big bearish bar. If you can get in that one, go short right there. And that's another easy move down. You don't get a huge runner out of that one, but you get another easy move down. And then finally, you got a little bit of a close out there, but that's not necessarily 100% convincing. It's good enough in this case, obviously, but we also overshot it here. And that was another clue that you might get an overshoot here. But it pulls back, and I actually gave this one a green one. I'm not crazy about it, but it's a lower high. It's right off the EMA. We've got a, it's only one leg down to a new low. A lot of times you get two legs. So you might consider that one. Plus, it's right back there to that resistance. Pretty small bar, so it's low risk. It would have worked. You had a couple of ticks to spare, but technically this is a higher low in the end after a break and a new low and then a higher low. So I liked thinking about going long there, looking for the two legged correction at a minimum, but we still haven't come back and tested this breakout yet either. So that's probably what prices are attempting to do to come back and test this, see if it'll hold. If it doesn't hold, we're probably going higher. And that's what happened. It didn't hold. We went higher. If it held, we probably went lower. But we also had a measured move right in here. And so that's another reason. Remember I showed you we, we measured the first leg down and we started from here. And this was giving you a target of right there where it went to those lows. So that's another reason to consider the long. So you're looking at the big picture. And you're not just looking at what's happening right here at the far right of your chart. That's what where people make their mistake. Um, that's hard to do. You're gambling. But if you know what's going on, we've already had a measured move down then, hey, we're probably going to bounce here. We're probably at least coming back to test the EMA and the breakout area. And if they don't hold, we're probably going to keep going higher. And that's what happens here. Notice how we, uh, but anyway, that's a higher low, big reversal bar. Draw your trend line there, just in case. Uh, but go ahead and go long right there if you want to be aggressive. This one's real close to being blue. If you, if you understood everything I just told you right there, I'd call that blue. But for someone less experienced that, you know, can't see all the big picture yet, that's still learning, that's definitely an aggressive trade. So, but look, but you know, they, you know, they fooled people because look at it take off. So all these shorts are now that jumped in and probably most of them jumped in right in here. Now they all got to exit with a loss and that pushes it up real fast and it pulls back first entry pulls back second entry so there's a second entry long right there off the EMA you got a reversal pattern in place uh, it's a failed second entry short uh, it's confirms the trend line right here lots of reasons to like going short there I mean going long there but it's right back into the support area so I'm a little bit leery of it without much room there so my preference is to let it see if it'll push through and pull back which it does and it bounces off the trend line once again and gives you a bullish bar and now we're above the support we're probably going higher and look at it rocket off that's because all the smart traders got in right there and then the other late ones that don't know what's going on just trying to follow the trend start jumping in and drive it higher and then i had my trend line here originally looks like an overshoot 
it's hard to say, but that's generally where I would have it off those highs. So to, in this case, I believe it to be an overshoot. Uh, look at your measured move, and it fits perfectly your midline in here. So I think it's an overshoot. But anyway, uh, it's because they had everybody chasing it, and uh, and all your smart traders start exiting up here. You want to measure that first move. And go from there. So notice that's where the smart traders all start exiting, and there's still dummies coming in that don't know any better. I shouldn't call them dummies, but they're just they just don't know what they're doing, and they're buying from them here. And about the time that gets way out here and it starts going down, and they realize they made a mistake, they exit. Then they all and as they're exiting and selling, the buyers come back again because, but there's a perfect price action set up here. Look what happens. They're going sideways, and suddenly you get that little failed break lower. It works the same on every level. So even at this little level, it's going to bounce right here. Um, it's a second entry long as well. This is a double, triple top. So this is like a new high, pullback first entry, pullback second entry. That's Even though there's a little bit of red there, that could have closed up or down. It could have been green. That's still a fairly bullish bar. Uh, but more than anything, it's a failed break. So we're going to at least go back and test this high, and we'll probably trap a bunch of shorts again, and uh, it'll run on up. And sure enough, because where do I think prices are headed now? Back up to the highs. That's where I'm looking for prices to go. We did have an overshoot here, so you got to be a little careful, but with this being at the midline and a failed break lower, we're probably going to push up one more time and make a new high at the very least. And sure enough, it pushes up, makes a new high, and then it kind of sells off. There's a second entry long there, um, but now you're below the midline. Um, it's not, you know, when it went lower here and if it went out the other side, uh, Actually, that's still your first your first entry. You just got like a little trap right there. So notice you don't have a break higher. So it's still your first entry. So it's risky. And you get a second entry here, but now you've pushed through the EMA and you got a trend line here with not much room. And that's not a perfect bar. It's more of a neutral bar. It closed in the middle. There's like two ticks. There might be one more tick on the bottom there, but it's, it's, fair, it's pretty neutral. So to go long there, now that we've got an overshoot and a turn down and only one leg down, because you're probably going to get another leg, even if it's not a measured leg, and it breaks higher and it gives you that trap, that failed second entry long trap, and look at it go. And it rockets down again. They, they fooled. They got everybody thinking long again now. And suddenly they run it short. And that's just what they do. That's how price action works. And that's how the market works. And... Um, so, but yeah, you don't want to go long right there. Uh, you don't have a break. Of, you might have looked at this. Here's something else to consider. You might have looked at this like a little spike and a little channel working down because it certainly looks like one. And it probably is one, and you get a break in new low. So, but you still got to be concerned about those two swings since you aren't back to the main trend line. This is where you're really looking for something to happen down here unless you get a trap like this right here. And this also was a repeat pattern of this right here. Look how we're going sideways, and you drop down, and it takes off. You're going sideways, it drops down, it takes off. And it looks like it may do the same thing here for a minute, but it pushes up and then drops down. But this is a trap right here. And, you know, depending on how your chart looks, you might argue to go long right there. But I would wait. I'd want a better setup than that, especially when we're right into these highs right here and it's turned down before. So uh, when it turns up and then instantly turns down, that's your reversal pattern. I like going short there, especially with this overshoot here. And where's our probable target? Back down to test this again. And you're running down. You get a close outside. Notice that trend line working off those closes. You get a close outside, it does get a new low, then you get an inside with a little small bar, low risk. Again, your stop would have to go below this one, uh, but I like going long there. But look at that big overshoot of that channel. We're going to come back to the EMA right here, 90% sure. So that's why I made that one blue. 
if you don't see this channel and know that this is an overshoot and know that there's support down here and all that, then this one would probably be green or no trade at all. Um, then you pull back right here and you get a real bullish bar. And even though we went lower here, this is still like that, very much like a reversal pattern. Um, I went back and forth about this one. But we do get a close outside here. We don't get a new low, but it bounces right off that trend line. And when it broke higher and just started going sideways, you might have exited this one just taking a tick or whatever it would give you and got out. But it would have worked in the end. Uh, but I went back and forth about that one. But with this huge overshoot here and uh, this big of a bullish reversal type bar, um, I felt like it was probably worth considering it. So um, I still almost want to make it green, but I'm going to leave it. I'll leave it blue. Uh, just again, with the understanding that you had to understand what's going on there. Um, if you don't see this channel and realize this is a big overshoot and realize there's a lot of support down here, then you wouldn't want to go long right there. And you can see when you see that to the far right hand side, that's a much lower high. Um, and you've only got one leg up, so you're probably going to get another push up, even if it's not another leg. Um, it might just go a few ticks and reverse on you. Um, so that's why I say when it started going sideways, you might have exited, but it still would have worked out in the end. That's why I always tell people to don't monkey around with your trades. Just get in them. You either be right or wrong. And if you're wrong, study it and figure out what you could have, what you what you, what you missed. And what you could, you know, what you could have done differently or done right. And if you leave all these green ones out and you just wait on one or two or three of these blue ones or red ones every day, this gets so much easier. Um, so much easier. And the volume did pick up a little bit today, a few more bars. And even though it's going sideways, there was some good movement, you know, eight or ten, six, six point moves, things like that. So there's plenty of movement to make some money. And there were quite a few runners too. Um, runners here, here, uh, here, here, even here, down here off this low, right here, right here, right here. So there were several runners today. And some days you get more than you do other days, so you just never know. But uh, anyway, that's almost 30 minutes worth today. I hope it was helpful. I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.